Hello, everyone. Uh, we'll be starting in a few seconds. We're getting everybody settled. Uh, here we start. Uh, VTA BART Phase Two Project and, and Minority Business Consortium welcome you to another Bay Area Diversity Business Forum. And we see this form as the best tool to outreach to diverse small businesses available to work on this phase two project. We are using this platform to inform you and invite you back into the major contracting possibilities on this project. Now having access to the many contracting possibilities with the major agencies and companies that have presented here, uh, this will better equip you to bring value to the BART Phase Two project over the next eight to 10 years. So we want you to know that this uh, webinar has been recorded and it will be put online at diversitybusinessforum.com. There's other uh, events that have been recorded. They all exist at diversitybusinessforum.com. Uh, in the process of this webinar, we, there are opportunities for questions and answers so make sure you put your questions in the Q and A button, and we will um, and Bechtel will do a great presentation for us, and they are available to answer the questions. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Now, the, this BART Phase Two uh, project is is part of the 10 mile extension from F Fremont down into San Jose. The first leg of this has already been done, but, this, but the phase two project that we're working on now is a five mile tunnel that's gonna come from the Berryessa uh, uh, station all the way through to the Santa Clara City's uh, train station. It's a five mile tunnel. Uh, it is um, one of the major, the biggest project that has been done here in Santa Clara County. Next slide. Now, the, you would, like I said before, you will receive this uh, whole presentation online and you can look at the timelines. They shift from time to time slightly, but we want you to know that there's a timeline laid out and you can look and you can be prepared for each one of these packages as they come up. Next slide, please. Now, uh, part of this, we have a draft RFP out for the project requirements. There's, there's some important aspects of this. We want to make sure that you register with VTA. Uh, our colleague, Jennifer Minna, will give you all the particulars on how to do that at the end of the Bechtel presentation. But we want you to register. We want you to know there's DBE and SBE goals. We want you to know that there's possible, that you need to be certified there's, there's uh, 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 tools for your certification. We don't want to know if you're certified and if you're not, we want you to start that process. To be involved in this project, you get, you know, your business will have to serve a commercially useful function. You have to do 40% of the work by your company on these projects. If you come in, you have to, you, you have to serve that commercially useful function. This is not just a pass through. We are really building small businesses in the process of being involved in this project. You know that the pro there's a project labor agreement on this project that pays prevailing wages. We have uh, put together an owner controlled insurance program that may basically all you have to do is have your uh, vehicle insurance and the project is insured collectively. And we're pushing for a 15 day payment policy to the DBEs. We know that's a big thing. It's part of the draft that we're working through. And we're hoping that, that your company can, can see yourself um, available and excited about working on this project. Next slide, please. Now there's, there's uh, packages, different construction packages that's coming up. The first package is already out is the, is the systems package. The system packages and the second package is the track and tunnel package. Next one. The, uh, the, the third package is the new hall yard package. The new hall yard is the, the station at the end of the line in, at the city of Santa Clara. There's gonna be a train yard there and a station and a garage. And then the fourth package right now is the underground stations. There's gonna be one out at 28th street There'll be one in downtown San Jose, uh, near between First and Market Street, and the third one will be at the train station, Deodorant Station. 
Uh, next slide, please. Now, the, there's shortlisted companies already on the, on the uh, track and tunnel. And the shortlisted companies are listed here. Uh, the Bart Silicon Valley Phase Two Tunnel Partners, and it makes it's it's you can see the Exelna, uh, FCC Construction, Lane Construction. They are part of that package. But the most important piece here is Sergio Sabagel, Sabog, Sabogel. He is the person that you need to get in touch with if you're reaching out to them to try to get on their package. Bay Valley Connect. The important person there is Steve Louie. Uh, he's a lead estimator. His, his contact information there. And Kiwit Shea Taylor Joint Venture. These are the three companies that are shortlisted on this package. And Roger's information is there as well. These are the people that you should look out to. Now, we have a short uh, um, list to be invited to bid on the systems and this Mass Electric Construction Company, and they will be presenting on December 14th uh, at Bay Area Diversity Business Forum. And our presentation today is with Bechtel and Bechtel Infrastructure Corporation and Felicia Bell, the Commercial Diversity Manager. You'll see her with the big smile. And I'm about to turn it over to her for their presentation. At the end of this, you will see uh, uh, I got, uh, Jennifer, will give you an outline on how to work with VTA and all the possibilities. But right now, let's listen to Felicia Bell as she presents her team, Bechtel. You are muted, Felicia. Felicia, you are muted. Felicia, uh, there you go. I can hear you now, Felicia. You can hear me now. Now I got to put back the, sorry about that, you guys. It's okay. It's okay. I can't get back to the uh, share. To the slides? Well, take your time. Oh. This is the team that will be presenting today. Before Felicia starts, I know it looks like uh, Reginald is speaking, but this is Carol Bean with Minority Business Consortium. We're sharing a microphone right now. Uh, just when we and whenever you are interested or have a question, put it in the Q and A, uh, and we can. I may be able to answer it uh, by typing, or you can put it in the chat. But uh, hopefully, we will try to get to everybody's questions, and uh, we will cover them at the end of the presentation. Okay. Can you guys hear me now? Yes, we can hear you, but we can't see your slides. Okay, hold on one second. Felicia made a mistake. I so apologize. I'd usually do this a whole lot better. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. So she, um, okay, screen switch. Uh, all right, we see your Zoom screen. <laughs> I don't know what happened to my slideshow. Hold on, you guys. So sorry. Uh, okay. Let me see if I have it. Okay. Now it's, okay, it's there now, but now I don't know how to get to the share part, the Zoom. Can you guys see me? Yeah, you we we see the full screen with all six of us. I don't know what happened to the okay. You see the full screen. I hear share my screen. Okay, I think I got it back. Yay. You know? Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. That's what happens when you have two screens. Okay. I'm Felicia Bell, Supplier Diversity Manager for Bechtel Corporation. I have with me John Engstrom, who is our Regional Manager for California Infrastructure. And I also have with me Jared Cantrell, our Manager of Strategic Pursuits. You guys want to wave and say hello? Okay. So we are going to be talking. This is our agenda. We're going to go through the Bechtel 
yeah. uh, history. We're going to go through um, backfill business overview. Okay, we're going to talk about um, infrastructure. We want to kind of stress to you that Bechtel has four business units and we are infrastructure. So we want to make sure that you understand the perspective that we're going to be giving you today is going to touch on Bechtel as a whole from our business units, but some of the key pursuits are going to be from the infrastructure point of view. And I know I'm going to get the question, how do we get to know all these other people? You can try to contact me and I can try to help you find the right people in those other business units. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the things we do in the community. We're going to talk a little bit about um, our current projects that we have in California. We're going to talk about some of the things that we are pursuing in California. Again, infrastructure related, some of the key areas for subcontracting. And then we are going to finish out with how to do business with Bechtel. Okay. So one of the things we kind of want to talk about, everybody wants to talk about this is what are the subcontracting opportunities for Bechtel? And just as a stressful thing to, once again, it all depends on what the requirements are for the RFP that we are going to bid. But the key requirement is we are going to team with people that are going to help us win. So we've listed some key areas that we are pretty standard that we look for when we are looking for teammates. But again, these are mostly on the professional services end right now. And things will change, obviously, when we get into um, construction and design build aspects of projects. This is not all inclusive. This is just an overview of some of the things that we look for. And if these are some of the things that you guys already do, then this would be good to kind of reach out to us. Again, we're looking to put together teams that are gonna help us win with the client. So we want to make sure that you have the qualifications. So each project is gonna have a different type of questionnaire that we're gonna ping from you to see where your skills lie with our needs. So right now, I think Carol has her first poll. Is that correct? So far about, oops. Are we, are we done? Okay. Looks like about a 70-30 split between professional services There's and construction. construction. All right, there we go. All okay. right, I'm in, uh, John Ingstrom is now going to take over from here. All right. Well, thank you very much, Felicia, and uh, and thank you everyone for you know taking the time out of your day to to give us the opportunity to to talk to you a little bit about Bechtel and, and the opportunities. Uh, my name is John Angstrom, as Felicia indicated. I'm the the regional manager for for California, um, but I'm going to start kind of like a, a a big funnel and and kind of step back and tell you from the fifty thousand foot level a little bit about Bechtel. Um, it's a company that that you know some people have incredible uh, depth of knowledge about, and, uh, and others it's somewhat of a mystery. Uh, but we're actually a, a California company uh, formed in 1898, and it's been under continuous family ownership since. Um, so we're in the the fifth generation right now of a, of a Bechtel uh, family member as the chairman of the board, which is a, a rare thing in in private companies. But we are effectively a global company. And many of you may remember that we used to have our, our headquarters in San Francisco. Uh, and in fact, it was, it was there for, for decades, most of the 20th century, in fact. Um, it is now uh, in Reston, Virginia. But we've got you know, work all over the, the world. We you know, roughly 17 or so billion dollars of revenue annually um, in you know, 30 to, to 40,000 uh, colleagues worldwide. Um, and the, the nice thing, you know, we've, we've actually worked on all seven continents, but we really focus, you know, on, in this presentation on the Americas. Go ahead and get to the next slide. Um, but I want to tell you kind of a little bit about what we do globally, because 
you, you never know where someone might be able to help. I don't want to assume that you're just entirely local. There's there's opportunities all over the place. So we're going to give you a little bit of that uh, in this presentation. But so as Felicia indicated, we've got four divisions, uh, and you know we're, we're to, to be to be perfectly honest, they're they're very they're they're quite siloed. I mean, there's cooperation between them, but. To find out about a project, I don't know what the one of the other groups is necessarily doing. But so I think it's important for you to know kind of who it is you're dealing with, and maybe as you see some of these projects and want to to get engaged with them, you know, a, a general understanding of of kind of which group is going to be uh, performing that work will help you get to the right people to talk to. So I'm with Infrastructure. We're based out of uh, London and the United Kingdom. Uh, there's a mining and metals group that is based in Santiago, Chile, um, with uh, a major presence in Brisbane, Australia. We've got our nuclear security and environmental group out of uh, Reston, Virginia, and then our energy group, which formerly known as oil, gas, and chemicals, uh, based in Texas. Next slide. So I'm going to walk you through these really quick. Um, there's certainly no intent for, for folks to read these things. Uh, you know, energy uh, is one of our, our kind of signature uh, business units, principally focused in, in LNG. Um, and most of that is either uh, what well, we found in Australia or the Gulf Coast. So there's quite a bit of LNG work in the, in the U.S. Gulf Coast uh, happening right now. Uh, next slide. So our mining and metals. Uh, principally focused on the commodities market, uh, aluminum and uh, copper principally. Uh, those projects that I said were, were in uh, run primarily out of Santiago, Chile, a lot of camp work, uh, a lot of very remote work, um, and one that, that really follows what the commodities market is doing. It's a bit of a boom and bust um, uh, group. And as, as these commodities and resources are, are in higher demand, this uh, business unit of ours really chases those in, in a lot of the kind of very remote parts of the world. Uh, next, please. So uh, nuclear security and environmental. Uh, so one thing, you know, Bechtel is, is uh, you know, nationally responsible for, I think it's upwards of about 70% of the nuclear power plants that were constructed in the United States. Uh, and then we're still in that business, even though it, uh, it there was a, we kind of, it stopped in the in the late 70s, early 80s in the US. And then we are actually now at Vogel, which is a, a new power plant being built in Georgia. Um, a lot of our defense and space work is in this group as well, all under uh, federal contracting requirements. So um, US, not all, actually not all US based, um, but there are opportunities within this group in California uh, Lawrence Livermore Lab uh, is one of them uh, that we we kind of the managing uh, group for Lawrence Livermore Lab. But these are all over the United States and then within strategic allies of the United States as well. And then next. So within infrastructure, we're broken up into to sort of some several sectors. Uh, we've got a group we call for transport, which really focuses on rail. Um, we're, you know, very heavily engaged in rail in uh, the United Kingdom. In fact, for there's cross rail, there's high speed one. Uh, that was the channel tunnel rail link. If you go back a few years, um, and, uh, and work, uh, upgrading the rail system. And that has been both as program delivery partner and as direct hire contractor. Uh, we've, we've served in both roles there. Um, as that work is kind of winding down, it's picking up here in the United States and Canada. And so a lot of those resources are coming over. We see quite a bit of opportunity in the rail segment in the US right now. Next. So aviation, uh, you know, we've been, we've been involved in, in many of these airports. McCarran, we were at a 25 year presence as McCarran built out. Um, we've been working with the, uh, the private equity ownership of London Gatwick Airport and doing managing their capital program for them. Uh, same, uh, same owner, uh, different airport, London City, um, and were in the past very involved at LAX and actually have current engagement at LAX as well uh, as they are expanding and uh, further developing in particular for in preparation for the Olympics, but the Olympics and beyond. Next, please. Roads and bridges, 
Um, we have a, a, a group that has been working their way for the last 20 years through the Balkans uh, as a design build contractor, building motorways. Uh, and one thing that we find in particular in sort of uh, developing markets, uh, the first thing that the, the governments want to spend money on is infrastructure. Uh, and as we see that even in the United States, it is how you get a developed country to be uh, self-sufficient and be able to uh, really open up the markets. Um, so we've been in Croatia, Romania, Kosovo, Serbia, um, uh, building motorways all through there as they've been uh, further and further integrated with the, uh, the, the European community. But we have a, a, I'll tell you a little bit more uh, later about, we've had an engagement with Riverside County um, and for the last 34 years, we've been very much involved in the transportation industry locally as well. Next, please. Some of the fun stuff, uh, digital and future cities. We've got a, uh, another, um, I think Kurt will tell you a little bit more about the, uh, the work that we're doing with AT&T, but uh, we've, we've been working with AT&T locally for, for many years. Uh, we did uh, sort of Metro or sort of Google Fiber uh, rollout and a lot of transmission work. Uh, and then we see this as, as kind of an interesting developing, you know, public and private uh, partnership where there's a lot of private infrastructure going into public spaces to really try and build sort of the intelligent city and intelligent roadways of the future. Next, please. Uh, we do, uh, depending on, on the, the, the area and the focus or the end you of know, the opportunity, water, uh, heavy civil. Um, a lot of that has been in kind of ports um, and developing port infrastructure. Um, one, you know, in, in the UAE, uh, in Gabon, that was a very uh, significant uh, development program with the government of Gabon to, to kind of further expand their port facilities within the country. Uh, I, we think that's a, a it's a, big market here in California. Um, it's a, a challenging market and that it's so broken up, but uh, there are a lot of opportunity, we think, within the water and heavy civil uh, in the next uh, 10 to 20 years locally, for sure. And next. And renewables and power. So Bechtel has a pretty well-known reputation for building coal-powered power, you know, coal-fired uh, power plants, nuclear power plants combined cycle. Uh, we also have been heavily involved in uh, developing solar and particularly here in California, actually in the high desert, a lot of those projects were, were Bechtel projects. Ivanpah Solar, um, Bechtel was uh, the contractor constructing that. Um, that is one where we just kind of have a continued engagement with uh, as, as opportunity uh, presents itself. Uh, mostly with regard to wind, we're looking at onshore uh, wind primarily. I mean, we talk about some some offshore work, probably a little more limited, but there is uh, we have some active onshore uh, wind projects in West Virginia um, and I believe Texas now. And next, please. So I'm going to pause there. Like I said, that was a very very fast and broad. Uh, view of you know, what Bechtel does globally in the markets that we're in and then what infrastructure itself is looking at. Um, we'll get to this, a lot of the California specific stuff, but I would like to hand it over to my colleague, Jarrett, to walk you through the next few slides. Thanks, John. I appreciate that. Um, as John talked about, with an infrastructure, we kind of touch not only, you know, what, what it takes to build out a country from, you know, power plants to connecting people to the, the transportation infrastructure, but we also hit on a lot of the, the, the important issues that are, are, are going across society right now. So when you look at a big picture, what, what, what is Vector really trying to accomplish uh, on a, you know, a 10 to 20 year horizon looking forward on you know, more of a values basis than a, you know, a, a, an annual shifting priorities? Right now, we're really looking at about five things within really Bechtel Group and infrastructure is the focus of that because we're the people that build these projects. The first of that's a path to net zero. Um, with COP26 is going on right now in Scotland, and you know at some point, you know, we're going to have to move as a society to get from where we are to uh, you know 
a lower level of CO2 emissions. There's a lot of ways to do that. And we touch a lot of those in, in all of our businesses, whether it's electrifying transportation systems or it's on the, the uh, electric, electricity uh, generation side. So that's a big you know, focus and value for us. Uh, an enabling thing that's gonna happen is, is you know, as everyone, as cities across the world continue to urbanize, is that you know we're going to have to figure out how to build smart, resilient cities to you know, you know be more effective and, and efficient with electricity usage, with energy usage, and with overall you know other sustainable aspects of water, uh, food, and the like. So you know building the cities to grow you know smartly is going to be a key. I think innovation. It, you know, there's going to have to be some step changes to to make all this happen. And there's been step changes in the past that, that have taken us uh, through some technology leaps that have helped us out, uh, such as, you know, you know, coming up, you know, developing nuclear power plants after the 1940s, as well as uh, some of the you know, high speed rail and some of these other things that have come up through the years. So innovation is going to be a key to really the first two two items we're talking about. The last two things we're talking about really kind of apply to what we're talking about here. It's, it's lifting up communities, uh, both through, you know, building, you know, projects that help the communities, but it's also through those local communities participating in the construction of the project. So it's really a little bit of both there because in infrastructure, just like everybody on this call, you know, we're not only seeking, you know, um, projects to build, we're also the customers for these projects. At the end of the day, we all use electricity, we all use water, we all use mass transit, and we all drive on highways. So to a certain extent, you know, we're all, we're all users and consumers of this. And, you know, we're, we're also committed to a fair world. And we're going to talk about that a little bit on the next slide here. But, you know, last two to three years, there's been a lot of change. And although Bechtel was changing, I think like many other companies, it was changing at a, at a, I'd say comfortable pace. And now we're probably changing at a more uncomfortable pace. And I think that acceleration is good and it is driving kind of, you know, just not us, but I think, you know, the industry into looking at things a, a little different way. So I think that when we look at, you know, an audience like we have today, it's not an obligation to come up to meet the, the DBE, SBE goals, it's an opportunity. And that's where we look at, you know, can we leave a footprint there? As, uh, as Reginald was saying earlier about, you know, we just don't want to go in and, and, you know, staff hog everybody. We want people to leave with the skills so that their company can grow on their own so that at some point, you know, they're out there bidding to us, not as an SBE, but as somebody who has competency and capacity and an, an excellent resume to do the work. So um, with that, we're probably going to get into the meat of today's presentation, which is the product prospects we're looking at. So I'm going to we're going to hit this slide again because we're probably going to hit this slide a couple times. Um, good poll earlier. Uh, I wasn't expecting that, so that was a surprise for me. So that was pretty cool. Thank you, Carol and Felicia, for coming up with that idea. It looks like about 70% here are looking for professional services. There is uh, about 30%. Uh, construction. So Bechtel works both on the client side, uh, which is which will basically be the people that work for us under our purview, the almost entirely professional services. Bechtel also works as a contractor where we'll have both professional services and construction services. Most of our work is going to be in the um, professional services categories for the next couple of years. And as we go through the projects here, I'll try to remind myself to explain which ones are professional services focused for us and which one are uh, construction services focused. Now, all the projects that I'm gonna talk about will have construction elements. It just may not be with us, it just may be with, with, with somebody else. But this will at least give you a portfolio of the type of things that we're looking at. Um, next slide. So I'll start off hitting on three of our projects that we're actually under construction now. The first one is for AT&T to build out their cellular telephone network, uh, basically across the south, Southwest. We have uh, projects in Southern California, Northern California, 
Arizona and Las Vegas. So at and is our customer. We've had this contract for 20 plus years and we're involved all over the place. Um, you know, we, we act as a general contractor. We, we do a lot of big build outs. We do a lot of one-off, uh, you know, cell tower upgrades. So we look at, um, you know, using contractors in general on this. Now, because this is a private sector project, there are no specific goals, but that doesn't mean that you can't seek, seek opportunities here if you believe you have the right skill sets to, uh, to work there. So if you have any, Experience in telecoms, or we put the information down there for Jeff Baker, who is the uh, contracts manager, to get you on the list. There'll be a pre-qualification on there because ultimately AT&T will have a, a vote on that. But we are looking for, for help in that as 5G comes on. This will be a, a bigger build out in Southern California and to a lesser extent for us in Northern California. Next slide. Uh, next project is the Sepulveda Transit Quarter Project. Um, this is a huge project uh, going from the San Fernando Valley uh, down the west side of LA to uh, towards the airport for phase one. Eventually, it will complete the, to the airport. This is a bit of a unique approach that LA Metro has undertaken. What they've done is they're awarding very small packages uh, to progress the work here, and they've actually picked two winners. So they picked uh, Bechtel and our team, which includes Mott McDonald, Sistra, and T.Y. Lynn, um, plus about 25 small and diverse businesses um, for, the, for, the, for one team. And they picked uh, another team called SkyRail for the, other, for, the, for, for the competing team. So they'll be, we'll doing, be doing front-end engineering professional services work on this for the next three years. And then they will pick a winner and then they will go implement a you know, construction build out program. So right now for our first, you know, we've only have, we only have a contract for phase one. We expect a contract for phase two and three. And we do have a pretty full pool of firms already, but we do uh, welcome other interested participants uh, to provide the capability statements. Um, Felicia's information is there. Uh, next one. Um, this is a construction impact uh, and logistics contract out of LAX uh, for Wawa. This was kind of a, an interesting project in that we won the project in February, 2020. Uh, we, we, we got through the final selection. Uh, we had a pretty decent sized team of Bechtel major subs and um, DBSB subs and uh, signed the contract on March 9th and then COVID hit on March like 11th, and they suspended us. So we're suspended right now. Uh, we do some very small work, but we expect to be coming out of this in the short term. As, as everybody's seen, the, the death of the airline industry was a, little pre, was a little premature. So they're ramping back up with their capital program, and we expect that uh, if you've been to any airport lately, they're generally under construction all the time. And part of our role here was to... Uh, make that a little easier for the customer experience of getting to and from their airplane without as many uh, diversions because of construction. Uh, next one. Uh, this is probably uh, what a lot of you are here, here to talk about today. Um, Bart, Bart Silicon Valley phase two. Uh, it was introduced a little bit uh, by Reginald. Um, where we're at on this is that the customer had put out an RFQ and they shortlisted to the two firms that you saw earlier. Uh, we're, in this, we're in the RFP process right now. They've issued a draft RFP and both the proponents are having meetings with the customer and they'll continue to go through that process. We expect the, um, submittal for that to be in the February to March timeframe. Um, we are, accepting people submitting their capability statements. Um, again, really focused around, you know, systems engineering, project controls, contract management, uh, construction and safety. Um, and this is, uh, you know, a big project for us. 
Um, it's going to be a complex project, as you may have seen earlier, that there are, you know, there, there's going to be four big contracting teams out there. There's going to be a tunnel and track team. There's going to be an assistance team. There's going to be a maintenance facility team. And there's going to be a stations team. So there's going to be opportunities with all four of those teams. There'll be opportunities with DTA directly to help organize all that and as well as us. Um, next slide. I think we're going to talk a little bit more about Mark there. So, so basically... <clears throat> kind of repeating a little bit of the information from above, but there you can kind of see some of the things that we're looking for expertise in. So if your firm has expertise in traction control, train control, um, emergency ventilation, uh, these type of systems, that's what we're looking for on the, uh, the professional services side. Uh, any, any type of train system expertise that you have is, is probably gonna be highly valuable in the industry right now. Uh, regardless of, of the size of your firm. There's a lot of work going on and there's a little bit of a shortage of those uh, experts in our industry. So if you got a, if you got a kid in college right now, major in engineering, I would tell them to get into systems engineering because they will have a job when they graduate. Uh, next page. California high-speed rail. So my role uh, is that I had previously been the manager uh, regional manager for California, and I'm just transitioning out, and it's mostly to focus on this project right here. We see this as, you know, transformational uh, to the state of California to, to be able to get in there and to make a constructive change to get this project moving forward. We understand that the RFP, uh, it was supposed to be due out in November. We found out about three hours ago. It'll probably be December now. Um, it's, it's kind of unclear how this is actually going to work out. Uh, my guess is that there's people on the phone here today who are currently a subcontractor to WSP uh, on their current phase, and their contract's going to complete, and it'll be a recompete. So it's a little different process than everybody starting from scratch, and you put, to, you put together your teams, and the, everybody kind of lines out which team they're on or if they're on both teams, uh, because a lot of firms are already on the project, uh, and you know, other firms are not on the project. So it's kind of, uh, will be interesting how the authority handles that. We've actually advised authority that it may make sense to uh, have more of a transparent um, selection of the firms to meet the small business goals so that there's a wider, wider field that could be available. Because there could be some firms that we use that are great uh, that aren't on the current project right now and would have a hard time you know, getting on with WSP and vice versa. So this is a, an important pursuit for our company right now. And we think it's a, uh, it, it can be a great project for the state of California. Next slide. I'm going to turn it back over to uh, John Eastrom, who was the project manager for this job. All right, thank you. Yes, I, I was the project manager for, for this project. Um, so kind of skipping around just a, just a little bit. So Jarrett walked you through some of the projects that we're, we've actively got and then looking at uh, the strategic pursuits um, in California, uh, kind of back to something that we're currently engaged in here with the uh, Riverside County Transportation Commission. Um, they're an agency with whom we've been engaged uh, for, for many years. And while there's no direct um, Role. It's it's actually a small small team there that's doing capital project program support. Uh, we are actually kind of issuing the contracts and setting those out for uh, all the projects, capital improvement projects that RCTC is putting out on the street. And they have a very active program out there, um, and so it can kind of let you know of um, what the opportunities are with the PAED contracts, the PSD contracts, and construction that go out there for both highways and commuter rail. Uh, and then kind of the new area of focus in the bike trails and, and facilities. So, you know, RCTC, if you're not aware, you know, they, they're a self-help, sort of Riverside being a, a self-help county, that, similar to, to LA County with Metro, but um, they, they have a very small organization, manage about a billion dollar budget, and there's quite a bit of opportunity, both in, in uh, you know, design, construction, professional services, and maintenance uh, because they own and, and operate the, the train Metrolink train stations in the county. So um, if you that's not an area where you've looked, I certainly uh, would encourage you to take a look at um, uh, opportunities in that 
on that program. And Bob Hogg there is the, is the person to contact that can point you in the right direction. So I'll walk you through a couple of the projects that we're looking at here in Los Angeles. Uh, our primary focus is with, with Metro. Um, now this uh, East San Fernando uh, Valley light rail is a program that we're a project that we're looking at with, with great interest. It is a progressive design build. Um, right now it has a, which is, which is a model that we, we, we like and support. Uh, and think it is a, a you know improvement over uh, the, the straight lump sum design build um, that uh, is sort of previously uh, out there. We are currently, or I'd say Metro is currently um, socializing a draft RFP for that and a draft contract. Um, we expect to see something at the street in January timeframe. Uh, so we'll be looking for sort of phase one, which is design uh, professional services type work for the upfront. And then ultimately that turns into a, a construction contract uh, during phase two. Give you an idea where it's at, taking you Van Nuys North uh, up to San Fernando as a light rail program. Next, please. So also with Metro, but a little different flavor. Uh, I-105 is a quite a large program that, that Metro is doing to convert the uh, HOV to two express lanes in each direction, a little bit of widening that goes with that. It's a construction contract is out on the street um, in, in discussions for a, a, a CMGC uh, approach. We're looking at the PM services on that. So uh, actively we expect this again they said december time frame uh i'd be surprised if it's december but but happily surprised i, I expect it more to be uh coming out and uh, to see that contract rfp sometime in january as well i think january is going to be a busy month for for all of us uh, felicia is your point of contact on that um and once we see what the contract looks like we'll be able to to give a little more detail and then the PM services with that, and it's okay, you don't need to go back to, uh, is, is for not just 105, but for some 405 interchange and, and 110 uh, work as well. So it's a, it, it encompasses their program, which includes the 105 work. Um, and then ultimately Orange Line, uh, you saw that on the San Fernando as well. Uh, if you wanna pop over to the next slide, give the, the line. We, this is an interesting project because this is a bus rapid transit corridor right now. Um, you all remember it, it kind of hit the uh, first open in the mid, mid 2000s. And now they're gonna take this and convert it. It's mostly a systems contract because they're converting this to a dedicated corridor. So it'll still be a retire bus, but it'll be uh, like a block signaling system similar to what BART is using. Um, where you'll have signals uh, activated and some grade separation. So there's structures between Van Nuys and Sepulveda. This one, uh, Van Nuys, right, has a nice uh, uh, alignment with the San Fernando Valley line. And then at the Sepulveda station, we'll also interface with the Sepulveda corridor uh, project. So it, again, it nicely pulls all those together. But we're, uh, we're excited about this one. There's opportunity in both the design, you know, the systems element, as well as uh, construction opportunities. We expect to see this, um, you know, it, it was kind of coming out at the same time as East San Fernando. I expect it'll be a little bit after, um, but uh, I'd be okay. If someone has better information, that'd be great. But that's that's a, what we know right now is it's kind of looking at the, the January timeframe as well. About a $500 million program overall. And then one that's sort of an outlier, uh, just to kind of throw it out there, uh, we, it's interesting, we're following it, we're talking the city of San Jose along with quite a few others. Um, they're looking at doing a San Jose airport connector. Um, what this is going to be is, is kind of a design, build, own, operate, um, bring your technology to the table um, and have a, a concession as well. So it's a P3 type, type uh, rollout, we think. Um, don't know anything about, you know, what the, the contract form ultimately look like and what the goals are uh, and even what the value of this project is, uh, but it's in early conversations with uh, City of San Jose. I'm going to pop over to the next slide. It'll be an interesting one to follow, right? It takes you from Deerdon Station, which is going to be the master hub between BART, high-speed rail, Caltrain, uh, VTA light rail, 
and then run up uh, Guadalupe Creek there and connect with the uh, San Jose Airport with the possibility to have an interterminal uh, uh, connector as well. And then maybe, you know, more than that, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's morphing, but we're, we're watching this. I think it's an interesting project, uh, has some, some uh, interesting opportunity for different kinds of technology. Uh, to be implemented. Um, so I'd say watch this space as, as that uh, develops over the near term. And I think that covers all of our sort of active pursuits right now. So let me uh, take a break and hand it over to Felicia to walk you through. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thanks, Jared, you guys. Whew, I didn't think you could get through an hour, but you did almost talk, talk about all the projects that we're doing. This is kind of exciting. Um, so I'm going to kind of talk on the business aspect of it. I have the um, link, which is going to be in the presentation, which is available to you that links to the Bechtel Supplier Guide. It kind of answers some of the basic questions. And because I was messing around with this thing earlier, I don't want to click on it and lose the, uh, lose the slide. So I'm not going to do that for you right now. But basically, some of the questions it answers is things about the questionnaire, where to register, the things we look for, obviously put your certifications in there. That goes into the, the standard Bechtel supplier portal. But the pro, if you're interested in the projects that we talked about today, you know, email us to those, to those destinations because that let, lets us kind of doesn't have to sift through the thousands of people who said they want to work for Bechtel, but it gives us a better idea of who we can talk to and further talk about and give questionnaires to. So that's in, in there. So just as a reminder, so here again, you're going to get this. So you, you go to the Bechtel.com slash supplier, it gives you the portal. And just want to remind you about the questionnaires. And one of the things that we'd like people to share with us from the very beginning, if there's any showstoppers or anything that you've worked with, you've worked for these clients before, and you know these things are going to pop up to let us know. So we can decide if, you know, if that's something that we can work with, something you can work with, because, you know, we don't want to get involved in the relationship. You know, and then you guys say, oh, you know, I've done that before and I don't want to do that anymore and I'm not going to do that. So, you know, obviously we would have to part ways if that's something we're going to sign up to do. So, you know, understand what the customer wants and then let us know if there's something in there that you can't live with. And as Jared and John said, we're some of these are in the pre RFP stages. So in the draft RFP stages. So if there's something that is, is unacceptable or ugly, you know, now's the time to raise your hand and maybe we can talk to the client about it, but we need to know, and that's okay. So I mean, this is a slide I always kind of put in there just for the small business thought process and to making sure you understand the things that we're looking for besides your skill set, understanding how to deliver on project, you know, understanding what it's going to take. Sometimes you're not ready to be at the at the vector level, but maybe you're ready to be at the sub vector level, right? Working for one of our subs, and then working your way up to the system. That's okay too. You know, you're part of the project, you learn, you, you learn the system, you learn the pros and cons, you learn the, the terms and conditions. And we just wanna make sure that you are aware that when we're partnering with you, that you understand your participation and what's gonna be asked of you just besides your skill set. okay? And again, it's not, it's not a, you know, you're good or bad. It's just that, you know, timing is everything. Skill set is everything, experience is everything. So combine all that and then see what we can do. And again, maybe we can recommend you work for somebody under us if we don't, if you're not quite ready. So we're at our QA stage, and I'm not sure, Carol, are you going to? Because mm -hmm. I see there's lots of stuff in the chat mm -hmm. and lots of stuff in the QA, which I can't see. Yes, I'm going to <clears throat> field some of these questions for you. I've been okay. able to answer some of them directly. And uh, one was from Lee Cunningham. The DOE requires 3% hub zone. How do you meet that goal? And also the second part is also, do you purchase construction supplies to meet the varying goal? And who does one contact regarding those openings? So um, the DOE is um, not on our side of the fence. <laughs> it's an NSAD. But um, the answer to your question is we, um, we do um, purchase construction supplies. And if you want to support 
um, one of the DOE projects, so send me a quick email and I can send you the contact information. I do believe if you go to the Bethel.com supplier and you look up points of contact, I do believe there is the point of contact in for Lawrence Livermore and some of the DOE projects that are on the website. If you can't find them, just send me a quick email and I can send you the contact information. Great, thank you, uh, Felicia. Next question from Darlene Jones. She was asking how many trucks will be required to complete this project? I'm assuming you're talking about the BART phase two project, um, but it might've been some others. This, I don't know which this it is. And what is considered 40% of uh, CUF when it's regard to trucking and hauling? Commercially so useful function. So trucking and hauling is a little different um, when, you, when you're counting uh, DBE credit. You, the, the, the rules say that the, the primary DBE person has to own just one truck. And if they subcontract out the other trucks, those have to be DBEs as well in order for the contractor myself to get, to get credit. So it's a little different that 40% is a little different when you talk about trucking specifically because that is a totally different measurement when it comes to who's performing the work. Because as long as you own a truck and as long as you subcontract or other DBEs, you know, the contractor can receive the credit. That was very clearly said because it is complex and it is broken out in the uh, federal uh, laws about how you handle trucking. So that was very clear, Felicia. Thank you for answering that. Um, Let me just jump in real quick yes. though, because the, the question also asked about the quantity of trucking and what uh, on that. Right. And I would say it probably is more uh, directed towards the tunnel contractor. They're the ones that are gonna have the mass of trucking to, to haul the, the tunnel spoil out of there. Um, for systems, we go into finished spaces. So our trucking is going to really be delivery of materials and, and supplies. It's not going to be any off haul for, for the work that we're doing on or proposing to do on, on phase two for VTA. So you, yeah, it's, it all depends. So like on Sepulveda, by the time we get to design build, build it's going to be a lot of trucking up and down the alignment, but that's four or five years from now. So it all depends on what project you're talking about and when it is, but you know, John is absolutely correct. So I think that leads to a question, you know, when you said it's something is four or five years from now, I know a lot of small contractors are kind of looking at the most immediate thing. Um, but can you say something about how you build a relationship with, with Bechtel over time? What, you know, what's the best way to go about that? Not inundating you with emails and phone calls, but, you know, kind of the, you know, uh, how to stay in touch. So, you know, I had a, um, a leader say to me one time, and I, I believe this to be true, it takes about 18 to 24 months to develop a relationship. And you know, so there's a trust factor that we know what your capabilities are, you understand what we're looking for, we kind of understand the, the needs and the skill sets. And, and there is a fine line, and I will say this, between you know stalking and follow-up, right? And it isn't necessarily the person that bugs us the most that is going to get you know, our attention. It, it's going to be the contractor, the small business that can help us win, that has the skill set and has the business savvy to understand the difference between stalking and follow-up, right? So, I mean, we have the um, contact points set up. We, we have obviously um, the resources to try to follow up, but understand if we're in the draft RFP stage and we're still in the stage of making decisions to actually pursue um, an opportunity, then there isn't any opportunity to, to make a selection. So, I mean, I think people need to understand that if you, if you express your interest, that's great. And then you have to give us time to actually figure out which way we're gonna go. So then we can make the decision to evaluate how you're gonna help us, you know, win the proposal. So, I mean, it, it is just, it's follow up and actually watching, the, watching what's going on out there, watching where the RFP situation is, and where you know the award calendar is, and then see where we are in that process. Great. Um, another question was, uh, I think that John mentioned a, a project uh, that was a progressive design build, um, and I think was listed in there as design build. What is the impact on a small contractor 
between the difference between those two types of uh, contracts. Interesting, because I, you know, we think, you know, one of the advantages of progressive design build is it is it, you know, it helps address the risk transfer from from some of the owners right now, and it gives you a longer period of time to define. To, to really well define the scope of the work, finish the design. You know, you're, you're not sort of asked to provide this highly contingent, highly, uh, you know, risk, risky uh, lump sum proposal. So one of the things is it gives a, a smaller company an opportunity to participate in that process as the design evolves and as that sort of final estimate is, is established. Um, it gives a little more certainty, I think, um, because, you know, let's face it, if, if the prime contractor, you know, underestimates the job and are in a lot of financial hurt, um, they pass that down to everybody else involved in the project. And we've all been there. I mean, I've worked as a small subcontractor before. I, I, I know that personally. Um, so it, it helps obviate some of that, I think. Um, you know, if it's done well and it's done right, I think it's not the it's not the cure all for everything, but it certainly helps to alleviate um, some of the pain that comes from uh, bad jobs and, and underestimating and, and ending up in those sort of contentious projects. So the hope is that you have a very collaborative relationship up front, you participate in it, you know what you're getting into, we as the prime know what you're getting into, and it's kind of a win for everybody involved, including the owner, us as the prime and then any subcontractors that are engaged. Great. Um, there's a question from Anupama Shetty. Is the best way to be considered for the projects mentioned to fill out the questionnaire for each project? Or is it better to email the contact person listed with res resumes to fill roles that, have Becht that Bechtel has established? look to fulfill? Well, we haven't established the questionnaires yet. So once we establish the, what our needs are, then we can, because they are, they are tailored for the projects, right? What the needs are for the projects. And I, one thing I did not mention, I think we should, uh, I should also mention as we become more decisive on what we're looking for, we will have more defined outreach events to, to help people understand where our focus is and what one, which ones we're specifically looking for. So you're not actually trying to pursue something that's not an area that we need. Um, so we're gonna help people, we're gonna kind of help you with that as well with our outreach events. Yeah, and just to kind of, you know, the, the questionnaire, one of the questions will be, can you fill position A, B, and C and provide a resume? And what we're trying to do is narrow it down to asking a specific question so people can be responsive to a specific customer requirement or project challenge that we have. So, you know, as Felicia said, sending us an email with 500 pages of resumes of people is probably not the, the best way to get selected. It's to kind of pinpoint your response to the questionnaire and the specific challenge ahead of us. So it sounds like the first step is an email to just let people know, maybe a one page SOQ, and then you will capture that information and you will be responding to people as projects come up in the category that they've said that they have interest in. And at that point, then there will be questionnaires and they'll, and they'll get feedback on their qualifications. Is that a, a good overview? Yeah, so when people, so let's say, say, for example, we decided we're pursuing East San Fernando and we have some project control needs, right? We're going to say we need, we want some local people here in California. So we would have received resumes as a result of this or a state statement of uh, SOQs, capability statements from people who say they do project control. So we would have created a questionnaire specifically for what types of things that we're looking for. We will reach out to all those people in our database and say, hey, listen, we're now going to pursue this. This is the, these are the types of skill sets we're looking for. Please fill out the questionnaire. So I don't have to talk to the quality guy because I'm not pursuing quality right now. I want the only the project controls people. If I don't have enough quality controls people, then I will reach out to people like the Bay Area Business Forum to find out if there's other people that we can to seek. But I'm pretty sure we're going to get enough people 
we have a big enough database of people who have expressed interest to work with us. And then we would then, you know, go to the next level of, of vetting those, those companies that respond with questionnaires. Because amazingly enough, when people say they want to work with us and we send questionnaires out, people don't respond, right? So, um, so then once, you know, I get that level of people who do respond, then we go through another vetting process of talking to them getting to the next level. And that's how we would um, work through, through those people who have expressed interest. So at some point, is there a face-to-face -face, um, interview or is it all, you know, kind of electronic? Well, I mean, since the pandemic, everything has been very, it has been virtual. So Okay. I, yeah. <laughs> I take back the face-to-face, -face, um, some kind of an inter interchange, whether it's virtual or face-to-face. Yeah, I mean, we'll have an interchange. We'll, like I said, we'll, we'll once we decide that this is something we think is worth pursuing, then it can go to the next. So, you know, think of it as a job application, right? You see, you see a company. They have, they say they want this. You, you fill out the job. You get the interview. Then maybe get another interview. Then you get another interview, and then maybe you don't get the job, right? Or maybe you do get the job, or maybe it isn't what you want because maybe then we give you all the list of terms and conditions, and just like a, you know, they give you all the benefits, you're like, oh, I don't want that one. So, I mean, but, but yeah, it is, it's almost like a job interview process, but we're, we'll start with people who have expressed interest with, that want to work with us, who sent us a capability statement and who completed the tailored questionnaire. So there was a question about um, if, um, if, if someone, a company can approach more than one team. Uh, of the sh uh, specifically around the BART phase two, the shortlisted JVs. Um, do you want to respond to that? Yeah, I think the answer is yes, they can. I think the way we look at it is that we, we, would, we would like full disclosure if you're on the other team uh, so that we understand. Um, we don't want to come out of our interview and see you walking out of their interview and hopping on our team to go into our interview. Um, I only say that because it's happened before, but uh, we want we want disclosure, and because we will we will you know we will treat the the, the people differently. Because if you're only on our team, we'll probably have you more involved in our proposal and in the overall solution for the project. If you're on both teams, which is okay, you're going to be less involved. You'll be providing information one way, and you won't hear anything back from us except acknowledgement that you provided your information. That's helpful. Um, another question for a supplier connection, does uh, Be the Bechtel Central Portal then send to an estimator who needs, for example, concrete or steel, um, the name of the certified vendor? Does, is that a clear question? I read it as it was so, written. So the, the portal isn't going to notify anybody. The, the, the users of the supplier portal will search so if somebody, if there's an estimator who's looking for concrete people, they will go to the Bechtel supplier portal, look up the NAICS code or look up, you know, by search on words to get potential suppliers. Great, I'm just looking, there's a, uh, a number of questions from Roland kind of about, um, potential projects that Bechtel might be um, interested in bidding on. And I don't know if that's something you wanna, if that's a, a question everybody wants to know about or how do you wanna handle that one? I, uh, I, I sent Roland a, cu a couple answers directly, not to clog everything up, but happy to, to share with everybody. I think that unsolicited proposals for some of these, these bigger projects are, uh, they're rarely, acted on uh, by the agencies. I think we, we, we've submitted some and uh, without much success. Um, there's usually a process for them, but I think the agencies are a little wary of going and picking somebody outside of their standard procurement process. I think it's probably good to um, initiate an open discussion about a challenging situation. And I think Roland asked a question on uh, Deirdron Station of and we've had that discussion with partners, competitors, everybody. That is, as John said before, everything in Santa Clara County is going to run through there. And at some point, they're going to need an integrated approach on it. So the question is, who owns that? And, you know, who, who, you know, for this one, who would, you know, 
Who would you even submit this unsolicited proposal to? BTA, Caltrain, High Speed Rail Authority, <laughs> City of San Jose. You know, it's it's going to be a complex issue that, that the agencies are going to have to work out. Thank you for answering that. Um, James Diamond says, our company has a nearly 15 year vendor history with Bechtel, but it has been dormant for four or five years. Uh, does that help us in a positioning for future sub opportunities? Um, yes, it always helps that you've had a history with Bechtel. It helps when you have histories with our clients. Any previous history is always helpful. Um, it could be the, and the reason it could be dormant because you, you weren't pursuing projects of where you know our needs fit your skill set. But always uh, continue to show your interest. And you know we have we have listed a few that uh, we're pursuing. So let us know. That kind of bring, brings up a good point that we, we probably haven't touched on. But I think it's, it's a question. It's probably something everyone needs to understand how large companies work. Is that um, when we select on these type of pro projects, it's basically we're selecting without a competitive bid. So to a certain extent, we're, we're making a, a uh, qualitative selection. And because of that, we have to go through a process to vet the firms. And, you know, if you've been vetted within the last two years, that counts for future, for future uh, pursuits within that two-year window. But if you have, you know, if it's been, either been dormant for four years or you haven't worked for Bechtel before, at some point you're going to get through the, the qualification process and you'll have to go through basically, you know, a due diligence review from us of various contractual relationships, public record searches, and the like. So, you know, yeah, if you're going to be considered by Bechtel, uh, you'll know it because there will be a lot of paper going back and forth. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, well, I think we've come to the, the end. There's some people that are putting their information on in the chat and also in the questions. And I will uh, rest assured, Bechtel will get all of that information and they will also get um, the chat, the Q&A, and they will also get everybody who's registered and all the ans questions you answered. So thank you so much. I have a... Uh, Paul, I'm very interested in finding out um, how many of you are actually registered as a vendor with VTA. And the reason why I'm asking it is that um, if you want to work on any projects that's VTA related, BART phase two, you must be a vendor. Now, you may you may personally not have uh, you know, signed up as a vendor, but your company may have. And so you, there may be some of you who don't know. Um, and if you aren't a vendor, I'm going to go through a few uh, very simple things for you so that you kind of understand um, what, what that looks like. So I'm just, we've got about half of you have participated. It's okay to say you don't know. This is anonymous, so. Um, you can answer whatever way you want. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to end the poll now. We've got about 65% of you sort of have said yes, that you are a vendor and the rest either don't know or you have, um, you have, uh, uh, or you think somebody else might've done it. Now, Jennifer Mina was going to be able to, do, was planning on doing this presentation, but she got called away. And so I am going to run through this for you. Uh, next slide. It is very easy to become a vendor. There is a, a place that you register at. If you go to the vta.org slash business center, there is a link that says register in new portal and when you do that you will click on a green bar that says subscribe and the system will ask you for your email password to set up a new account i think it takes all of two minutes to do the whole thing so next slide so it's super super easy so when you do this then you gain access to upcoming opportunities they are opportunities um, 
Really, it says only the panelists could see the poll. I'll, that's not possible. Uh, the upcoming oper, oper, opportunities, either that VTA specific or, or for subgroups, like you can ask specifically for information about BART phase two projects. You can ask specifically for um, just general solicitations. Next slide. So this is the procurement portal. Once you've subscribed, you will see uh, uh, when you uh, get a notification or if you wanna just go in and check, you will see a long list because it says up there, all departments. If you go next to the all departments, there's a little drop down thing and you can specify, the other side, I know, um, you can specify, you know, BART phase two, and you will get only contracts that are under BART phase two. Um, and the active part, if you look at, uh, there's also a drop down, there'll be active, pending, and closed. And so uh, right now, track and tunnel is closed, but it is uh, still an active, active uh, it's closed in terms of who's submitting RFPs. Um, there are pending ones, um, and you can do that for any particular department or contract that you're interested in. Next slide. Now, the other, uh, the other poll that I wanted to ask you about is, how, is being certified. Are you certified? And some of you, uh, if you take a moment to answer those questions, you're either certified as a DBE, you might also be certified as an SBE, you can do multiple answers. You may not be certified either <clears throat> as a DBE or SBE, but you qualify for certification. You're a minority owned company or a small business. And that is important information because um, we will tell you how to move forward. Your certification may be in process. Once all your paperwork is in, they give about a 90 day uh, window for them to process through all the information and to get back to you. And so obviously a few of you don't know. So I think we have about 56% of you answered and I can share results. So about 76 of you are DBEs, 78 are SBEs, uh, a handful are not. So I'm going to, uh, are not either, but you may qualify. Whoops, let me get out of there. So small certification, small business certifications. How do you get certified? VTA certifications are all online and you can find the links to our certification modules at um, that, that link right there. And I will put it in the chat in a moment. Uh, next slide. Oops, go back. So when you, <laughs> sorry, Jennifer, uh, Felicia, uh, when you uh, get certified, you know, the thing I think that takes the longest time for small businesses um, is to make sure you have all your financial records complete. They will want to look at the last three years of your, um, your average income and each category of of a work category. If you're in construction, I think right now to qualify as a small business, um, uh, a small business for construction, it's $36 million a year on average. Many of you may not make that. Some of you may make more, but that is looked at. So your financials are looked at. And then um, there's other kind of, um, what kind of ownership, of your company is there, whether you're a sole proprietor or a corporation or a variety of other questions. So most of them are pretty easy. The If you're looking for a, disab a disadvantaged business, then the person who is applying for that, whether you're a woman or a minority owned company, the person who owns the company must provide 51% control and is actively, actively involved in the management of the company. So you can't be an owner in name only. And so those are the kinds of things that are looked at. There would be probably be a site visit. And when you go online to look at the business diversity programs, VTA 
is not the only company that you can get certified through. There's um, a whole network, a whole network of, of certifying agencies. Some are in East Bay, some are in LA. There's five or six of them. What you wanna do is get certified at the company that's nearest your headquarters. So that if somebody wants to come out and do a site visit, it's easy. Um, someone asked, could I clarify the pronunciation of our guest presenters company, Bechtel? I just think it's polite to say their name correctly. It's Bechtel, yes. It's Not Bechtel. 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 Sorry, accent, thank you. Maybe you the were the one that said that, Bechtel. No, no. <laughs> I, I'm always doing Bechtel, but thank you, Bechtel. Um, so, um, oh, getting back to, so you can get certified at a number of places. Do not let anybody tell you that you have to pay to get certified. It is a free service. Now, there may be some people who say, I'll help you get your records together. That's a different thing altogether, but it is a free service to get certified. And I think that covers just about everything you might want to know. On here, there's some links uh, to email uh, and phone numbers to the people. Uh, right now, Jennifer would be the one that you would uh, email and I will put her information in there for you. And I'm going to pass this back to Reginald. Um, and I need to turn my, my, my sound off so he can speak without an echo. Just there you go. Thank you to uh, everybody that, that, that was online yeah. today. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, VTA and Minority Business, Business Consortium. Really appreciate being able to provide this service. We want you to be prepared. We want you to bring value to the projects that you partner with Bechtel on. And Bechtel, thank you for opening all your processes to, to this DBE and SBE community. We look forward to being partners with you. We look forward to hearing. Uh, we will do a survey in a few months uh, to find out who reached out to Bechtel and, and, and how it happened. And uh, I'm well, sure- if they reach out to Bechtel, we'll respond. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. We should have had this. We should have had that, that conversation. conversation should have been earlier. It should have been earlier. Okay. Thank you so much, Becca. And uh, okay. so we look to hear from us. The, the video will be online at diversitybusinessforum.com, along with the, the, all the other past uh, events we've had. On the 14th of December, we will have uh, Mass Electric. So we look forward to seeing you again on the second Tuesday in December. Thank you all. Uh, wait. And a reminder, uh, next Tuesday, because of the veterans holiday, we will have our next mentor protege workshop. We usually have it on the second Thursday of the month. It's going to be on uh, next Tuesday. So please Next sign Tuesday, up the next mentor, mentor protege workshop. Okay. Thank and you all. Thank I, you, Bechtel. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> I will put that thank information in the, in the chat. like that.